The Dark Moon Greatsword, possibly one of the most iconic weapons in Elden Ring and has been a staple in From Software's previous titles. Today I'm going to be showing you a build around this weapon and how to turn it into an absolute God Destroyer. Now you do get this weapon at the very end of Rani's questline and you can get there before you take on any of the main bosses within the game. You do however need to defeat four bosses in order to continue on with Rani's quest and those are Loretta who's actually guarding Rani's rises like area. You do need to defeat her before progressing to Rani herself. You do then need to take down Radan who is quite a tough boss and possibly the toughest one out of the lot to try and take on because you need to defeat him in order to gain access to Nokron and then once you've gained access to Nokron, you will then take on the Mimic tier. But then you also need to take on one of the Astels, the natural born enemies that are in the game, in order to gain access to the Moonlight Altar, which is where Rani will be residing, to then go on and grant you this Dark Moon Greatsword. And the good thing about needing to take on these bosses whilst completing the quest line is you are going to need a fairly high amount of intelligence to wield this thing. Just for starters, you're going to need 16 strength, 11 dexterity, and 38 intelligence. Now, I'm just going to throw up these stats for my particular build on screen. Again, it's a level 150 build, but it does have some active bonuses in play with the numbers you're seeing right here. In actual fact, because I've got Goldrick's Great Rune, Marika's Sorcil, and the Intelligence Heirloom, in reality, the base stats that we have without any boosts on is 35 Vigor, 25 Mind, 29 Endurance, 20 Strength, 15 Dexterity, 70 Intelligence, 25 Faith, and 10 Arcane. As I mentioned, we're using the Goldrick's Great Rune, which grants plus five on all of the stats. It's just the best Great Rune you should be using. You don't really need to be using anything else ever whenever playing Elden Ring. So if you're not using that one, switch it up. And then with the Talismans, Marika's Sorcil is also another one, granting plus five to Mind, Intelligence, Faith, and Arcane. And then I also have the Intelligence Heirloom, just because I don't have the Shard of Alexander yet, to boost my intelligence further, because that's the biggest scaling factor on this weapon. So obviously just trying to boost the damage output as much as possible. But I also run Godfrey's Icon, because we'll come to it in a minute, but the special ability with this weapon does still boost in damage with Godfrey's icon and then I'm typically using something to help with equip load because I like to run heavy armor just so then I have higher poise and don't get staggered when using the special ability with this weapon because it can have quite a fairly long charge up to get the most damage out of it. But other than that we're just using some pretty cool armor. Um, I've got Lionel's helm which I always use in my videos so that's the helmet that I'm using if you ever wanted to know. But we've got the unaltered banished knight's armor and then also scaled greaves and scaled leggings to just finish off the set make it look pretty damn cool and have 74 poise as well and I guess now just whilst the gameplay is going on in the background I want to explain why I've put certain points into the specific stats especially ones that we don't really need to increase such as faith the reason why we had 25 points in faith was just to allow us to use golden vow and also flame give me strength because again these two incantations will allow the boost for stamina regeneration damage negation and also damage output these are obviously very handy uh, when coming up against bosses allowing you to survive longer and just hit through bosses like an absolute freight train. The Dark Moon Greatsword special ability the Ash of War or skill power will infuse the sword with that Dark Moon energy which is also freeze build up against enemies. Once you infuse the weapon with your Ash of War you can then hold down your heavy attack to unleash this wave of ice cold magic. If you hit an enemy with this wave it will still hit with 30 35 stance points even though you're not hitting them with the physical sword and just in layman's terms for both myself and you guys that means that we can stagger pretty much most bosses in about three or four hits and again as you're probably seeing in the gameplay in the background that's fairly easy to do without too much compromise because you're obviously hitting them at range and then when they're up close and personal again you will just hit them with both the sword and also this ice beam of magic but not only are you staggering bosses with about three or four attacks of this weapon with those three or four attacks you're probably doing surplus of about 8,000 damage the footage that you're seeing on screen is from new game plus one and even still we're doing anywhere between 1500 to 2000 damage with each hit if not more 
Mix this in with obviously the freeze buildup that you're doing as well, and that typically hits in when you do the critical hit once you break the poise of your enemies. You then do about 4,000 plus damage with that specific attack. The last time, obviously, I did anything close to that sort of damage just casually playing the game was with bleed weapons, and this thing is so much better than pretty much any other bleed build that I've ever used in the game because this weapon can be pretty much used on any enemy, and some enemies are immune to bleed, but just the general power of this weapon when it's infused with that Dark Moon ability is just astronomical. Typically, you would do about 1500 to 2000 damage per hit with the charged attack. But if you also have your Wonder Physic and make one of the halves the Magic Shrouding tier, that will then grant an additional boost. I also like to mix this in with the Green Burst tier because with the Ash of War, once you've used it on the weapon, you are then reliant on stamina in order to carry out those heavy attacks. So having the Green Burst tier, if you don't have like a different item like a shield that can boost stamina regeneration, the Green Burst tier is the perfect one for you in order to continue on using the heavy attacks, regenerate stamina nice and quickly, and just keep rinsing that same attack over and over again. As this is an intelligent heavy build you can also mix in things like terra magica and other spells if you wanted to become a spell caster as well i personally didn't at the time just because i wanted to mainly focus on the weapon but another way that you can boost the damage output like i say is using things like terra magica because the power attack does boost with magic boosting items the only things it does not boost with which could potentially make sense are things like the axe talisman which will boost charge attacks that does not boost the damage even though it's a charge attack I, I know it sounds silly but it just does not so don't bother using the axe talisman i'm going to be showing you on screen footage of me using that talisman and also not using it and you're doing the same damage and that also goes for using the spiked crack tier which is the uh, like wonder physic equivalent of the axe talisman so do not use either of those and waste a spot obviously use that extra talisman spot for something like alexandra shard which i did not have for this particular gameplay because that will also boost the damage output with this sword even more than what you're seeing on screen and like i say you can boost it even more with other spells as well because you can also have terra magica along with golden vow and flame giving me strength to just make an absolute powerhouse of a weapon and again just coming back to what we were talking about earlier with all of the different stats on this build if you are going to be running things like Goldrick's Great Rune and also any like of Marika's or Radigan's Source Seals, you can probably alter the points in different stats such as Faith because as you saw my Faith went from 25 to 35 which I actually don't need the extra 10 points in Faith there. I could say go down to 15 points base stats but then put them into either Strength or Dexterity to boost the damage output with the sword even more. Also this is not a fully maxed out Dark Moon Great Sword, this is only a plus nine i did not use an ancient somber stone so you can also probably add another hundred damage on top of what you're seeing on screen just by completely upgrading the sword but even with all of those what ifs and could be's just generically having the sword in your hands you'll be able to rinse most bosses especially if you're using it in your first playthrough you will very easily be able to stagger say radigan the elden beast really powerful gods that are in the game will become me mediocre at best when they come up against this weapon so there that's pretty much everything i have to say about this sword it is truly ridiculous to use so if you haven't used it yet i highly recommend making a build similar to this just to go and have fun with it because it truly is ridiculously overpowered i know elden rings had a few updates recently so i don't know how it compares to previous updates i'm assuming it's probably still similar or hasn't really had any changes i know great swords and like colossal weapons had a big update a couple of months ago but i think since then this thing has just been absolutely insane feel free to comment down below if you've got any improvements for this particular build. I know there's probably a hundred thousand different videos out there on YouTube with different builds around the specific sword, but I just wanted to make it as well and put my personal touch on the builds because I've started using it recently and I just wanted to share how freaking insane <laughs> this weapon is. So let me know if you can make this build any better. As I say, I know you can swap out some talismans, maybe swap out some of the points that I had in my build when considering the uh, great runes and the talismans that I'm using to distribute the stats in the absolute best way possible but yeah 
other than that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Again, if you happen to like this video, please do leave a like rating down below. It really would mean the world to me as it helps the channel out so much. So if you liked it, hit that button below. And if you're new around here and want to stay up to date for more crazy builds like this, do hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be up to date with everything that happens on this channel and you'll be notified whenever I have a new insane build for your faces. So that's what you'll be getting if you hit that subscribe button. But uh, yeah, I think... I've taken up more than enough of your guys' time, so thank you all so much again for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day, and I will catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make. Bye-bye.